can't see, 0.5 pen pencil. Uh, use a regular wood number two pencil. Uh, you can sharpen it, but it gets dull just that quick. And if I make the line wide, I found that I have trouble following that line. If if the line if the line say let me get over this way if if the line is that wide when you go to wood burn it with a with a skew or something your little skew line is is like that so what I have trouble doing is I go from this side over to this side and back to this side and I don't get it straight so I use a very, very fine pencil that I don't have to sharpen. I can, I can draw that line just, you know, very, very small, and it's a lot easier to follow that little line than it is a, a great big old wide line like that. Uh, it, but that, that, that helps me keep it, the, the contours and stuff smoother and, and nicer looking. So now, uh, and, and like I said earlier, I, I draw most of my stuff. I have in the past uh, t take a picture and uh, lay it down and put uh, uh, carbon paper or something under it uh, and, and sketch the outside, but most of the time I don't do it. Uh, I'd, I'd, if in black and white, if I have a picture of something in black and white, I can copy it. If it's in color, I can't copy it. If it's in color and I really like it and I want it, I can stick it on my copier and copy it in black and white. Then I can sit down and look at it and I can draw it. Don't ask me why. Maybe I'm colorblind or, or whatever, but I'd... If it's color, I, I just have no use, no, no way to do it. Just like that bird right there on here, it's in color. I, I couldn't draw that. I couldn't. If it's black and white, I can draw it. And some of you may, you know, have that same. Is it that it's an outline if it's a black and white? Uh, you see a definitive edge. Yeah, but if it's shaded black and white. Well, if, if it's, and I don't do a whole lot of shading. Uh, it, it's more difficult to be shady. If it's a if it's a definitive line, then you know I, I can copy a definitive line. Have you tried that technique that the last guy was here talking about ordering a picture and putting it on a side? You probably don't need to, but I have I, I have looked at videos. Uh, there there is a video out there that that tells you you can take a black and white photograph and take your piece of wood and spray it with uh, uh, denatured alcohol or something and get it wet and lay that black and white picture down, face down on it and put something on top of it to hold it down and let it sit there till it dries. Peel the picture off and your black and white's on here. It's in reverse though. So if you wanted the person looking to the left, and you had that picture of him looking to the left, if you put it on here, he's going to be looking to the right. Well, you can iron that on too. You can iron, yeah, you can do that. Uh, sir? What would make the difference? I, well, you see these ducks on here. This one's flying to the left. This one's flying to the left. I found these pictures on the Internet, and I copied, copied them off. And all of these down here are going clockwise around this way. Well, one of these was facing the wrong way. Okay. So, I, so, what I, what, so what I did is I took it and I set it up on the window against the window facing out. And you could see through the paper and I redrew it on the back side, which made it face the direction I wanted it after I laid it back down on here. So there's, there's all different ways to figure out how to do things. You just... I, th 
I, I think the inkjet does better. I don't. I don't think laser does it. Ink. Well, I, yeah, I guess you could. Uh, I, 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 let me back up. I don't have a inkjet printer right now. I went out the other day so I could do handouts today, and I was out of ink, so I, I went and got $18 worth of ink at Walmart, got home, and my printer won't work. My printer's dead. So it's in the hospital right now trying to get revived. <laughs> Hopefully they can fix my printer. Uh, well, yeah, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Anyway, like I say, most of the time I sit down and I'll, I'll draw stuff out like a flower. Uh, and, and when I first started, I thought all the petals had to be just, just uniform and nice and everything. But then you go around and you look at flowers out here or leaves out here, they're, they're, no two are the same. So if, if, you're, if you're trying to draw them and make them just really, really perfect and, and pretty, uh, you're kind of wasting your time. Uh, it's, it's better to have uh, some of them that look real good and then some of them that, that don't look real good. It looks more natural. Every everything that I everything that I do I draw it. I, I don't. Uh, occasionally I'll do something like that. You know that I copied. Draw it on a piece of paper and then put it on there. And no, I, I, I draw it on the wood with 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 this point five pencil. Uh, kind of sketch it out, and and then and and then, but a lot of times before I draw, I'll take before I do it on that I'll take a piece of wood like this, and practice. And that, that's something else I want to say. When, before you sit down to draw this and turn your machine on and stick the, stick the pen to it, you need to have a scrap piece of the so you know how hot, how hot your pen is. Because if you touch it and it's too hot, you're going to make a big old black blob. Now, if it's a little bit black, eh, you can clean that up and get, a, get away with it. But if that pen is a little bit too hot, uh, it, it can mess you up. Use something to practice. You stick the pen to a good piece of wood. What is that wood? This is uh, birch. I just had a birch board, so I, I cut up a bunch of birch. Uh, now, now, birch has got grain in it. Be careful if you go from the dark grain is harder than the light grain and you you could burn too much on the light and not hard enough on the black or darker stuff and everything uh, this one here you can see where it's burned around the edge but it's basswood uh, I don't, that may be that may be possible to keep up with uh, if I don't write it, pardon me. Are they sealed? Clear lacquer, and uh, so. But anyway, that one's well. This one is hollow, but it doesn't come apart. Uh, when I sit down to look at, at something uh, to draw, a lot of times I don't have any earthly idea what I'm going to do. Other times I do. Other times it could be a, you know, a flower like that, and I've done a bunch of these. But most of the time, if I'm going to draw it, I'll sit down. The first thing I'll do is I'll draw the circle, uh, which would be in the center part of it, the seed part, maybe you'd call it. And then if most of these have five petals on so I try to I try to get them you know all about the same distance apart but they don't have to be the same uh, and then you just come up here and just just draw and 
and it helps it helps your wood burning to do them like this sometimes. That gives you these, these are back behind, these are sticking out in front, this one's back behind. It gives you more depth. And so when you, when you go to uh, burn the little, the little veins and stuff in it, you can make the veins on this one, you can shade it a little bit more and, and give, you, give you depth in the... Uh, These are, are shaded a little bit. They're behind others, and the one lighter weight, lighter color. Uh, well, let's sit down and and, uh, and burn something. Let's see what I can come up with. If if we got to catch, does it? Yeah, hey, there we go. Now, uh, Craig asked me earlier about what wood burning pens and stuff I use. I use a razor tip uh, product. Uh, I've got an old coal wood uh, that I bought years ago and I burned with it for years. And uh, Sammy and uh, Tommy and uh, I don't know, uh, several of us went up to Tennessee and took a class under Dixie Biggs. And one of the things she recommended was a razor tip. And so I bought one. And I love it. Uh, it's, uh, when you turn it on, it's hot. You don't have to sit there and wait for it to heat up. Uh, when you turn it off, you don't have to sit there and be careful where you lay it down because it's still hot. When you turn it off, it's it's cold. When you turn it on, it's hot. Uh, and you can get them for most anybody, uh, Woodcraft, uh, Penn State, uh, most all of the folks sell them. Uh, you can order them straight from the company out of Canada. What's the ballpark price? Uh, it just, uh, they've gone up. I think this one was like, you know, and I'm just guessing now, maybe $150. And that's a lot of money to spend. But I, I, I You'd be in Walmart and you'd be in their craft center and you look up and they got all this stuff, wood burning pens, 1995. Oh, Are they? I think so. uh, the, the, but, the tips come with it? No. no. Yeah, well, when you buy this, generally you'll get two pens maybe, a skew, and uh, maybe a, a, a shader or something. Well, it's, it's like wood turning tools. Oh, gee, I keep knocking this thing off. Can you still hear me? Uh, I thought, I, let me put it in my pocket. Maybe it'll stay on. There we go. We'll try that. Uh, it, it's like uh, wood turning tools. You, you, when you get started, you, uh, you, you, like me, when I started, I, I bought a, a set. Uh, beginner's tools, six tools, and out of those six tools, I used the, this is not working again, no, go ahead. I used the roughing gouge and uh, spindle gouge the most. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to avoid though, I don't want to buy the stuff. No, if, if, if you were going to get one of these and the pins were not going to come with it, I would get a skew, uh, I might get a, a uh, a little ball tip to do stippling with. Uh, I'd, you can do a tremendous amount of stuff with a skew. Not, not just cutting lines, but if you practice with it, you can do shading with it. Uh, you can, you can uh, do stuff that's totally black without... This pen right here is so sharp, and I've got a new one, a small one. You can sit and, and gosh, there's no telling how many lines you could draw straight one beside the other in an inch. 
because it, it's, it's sharpened and it's, it's, it's just ra almost razor sharp. And so you can, you, can, you can do lines, you can, do, you can lay it on the side, you can do shading. Uh, it's just any number of things you could do with a skew instead of buying three or four different shaders. And shaders are great if you're, if you're doing a lot of stuff with background uh, to give you depth in looking. Uh, but stuff like this, you don't need a shader. You know, it's just, it's just black. Uh, stuff, stuff like on that egg, there's no needing and have it, you're not going to shade anything on there. It's, it's just black and white. And all that's black is done with a stipple, or with a little ball and stippled on there. Which uh, ball do you prefer? Three I've, got, I've got three balls. I've got all three sizes. It, uh, the point eight, I believe, is what it is. The point eight. Uh, no, it's not the smallest one. Uh, the, it just depends on what you're trying to do. If if you're doing if you're doing something big, you don't want to sit there with a little bitty fine ball uh, and spend untold hours when a little bit bigger ball would do faster and it would look just as good now like i said when you're stippling stuff like like this is stippled on here and and i haven't finished this one uh, i just finally put it down but this is black of course and over a period of time that black is going to turn brown with age it's not going to get brown like you know like that but it's going it's going the age of it is going to change the color. That's why I go back and I dye them with black dye. That one is, is dyed with black dye. It's, it's, not going, it's not going to change the color of it. you apply that dye with a brush? Yeah. It just, it's a brush that I took most of, the, most of the hair out of it. And if you're going to dye it, you just want to touch it excuse me, and let the dye spread out. You don't want to get up close to the edge and try to draw it around the edge. You want to touch it back off of the edge out here and let it run up to the edge. Could you find that if you've outlined it, that it'll stop at the edge? It'll, if you outline it here with that skew, cut it down, it'll seal those pores. You cut the fibers. So you're cutting the fibers and you're sealing them. That, that burn seals the pore. It'll run to the edge and it'll stop. Do you, do you, when you burn, do you, it leaves soot or ashes or whatever. Do you, do you get that off? You can come back and, and clean it up. Before uh, you die or after you die? Before I die. I like to clean it up before I die. Uh, you can use a, a, a rag if you wanted to. Uh, I've got a little fine in one of these boxes here. I've got a little fine uh, wire brush, a little, little uh, brass, copper brass brush, I believe, a little soft brass brush, and just rub it just a little bit and kind of clean it off to get, to get the fuzz off of it. Uh, makes it die better. Uh, it's just age. It just fades. Uh, I mean, if 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 you took uh, if you if you took a piece of charcoal and laid it out in the sun, after a while, it's it's gonna go from black to kind of brown looking. It just it just deteriorates. Uh, Do you have to sharpen the skews? Uh, I have never sharpened these skews. Okay. They 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 come sharp now. I'm. I'm assuming that they would uh, get a little dull. And this skew right here is, is I believe, what they call a small skew. Uh, the one that if you buy a razor tip and it comes with a skew, uh, generally it's going to be uh, this one. It's going to be the large skew, which is probably... I don't know, from that edge to that edge, three sixteenths to a quarter. And if, if you're making uh, 
big pieces that uh, have big long curves, this one's great. If you're getting down to uh, little bitty pieces, uh, little bitty tiny curves and stuff like on these eggs right here, uh, you want something smaller than that. It's, it's easier to make that, that turn. You can buy pins from from most everybody now with interchange. You just change the tip, okay. or you can buy like like Brett said last month. Uh, you can buy them and make your own tips, which is is a good idea. The thing that that I didn't care for, uh, and and I when I first saw him talking about it, when he was he was doing flowers or hearts or something, and he had made the tip to burn them. Every one of them is exactly the same. And it's just, it, it's just not that way. Life ain't that way. Uh, it, it looks better if there's, if there's some, some change or something in it. Anyway, if, if we've got the camera on here, I'm going to turn this on. Uh, uh, and like I say, on, on, this, on this machine, you can, you can hook up two different pins, and you can just go from A to B. If, you, if you're through with this one, you can just reach over and flip it and pick this one up and start burning with it. You don't have to sit and wait on it to heat up. It just, it's ready to go. But now, Ranger Tip doesn't make a replaceable tip pin, does it? Or does it? Yeah, you can, buy, you can buy the tips. Just You buy the pin and you just buy the tip you plug in. Or you can buy the pin, just like Brett had with the little screws on it, and you buy the wire. And Ranger Tip uh, makes that? Mm-hmm. You can buy them from Razor Tip. Uh, uh, but anyway, like I say, when you turn it on, first thing you want to do is have a practice piece or something. And uh, get to where I can see here a little better. Now, I'm assuming that that, that, that is. And see, uh, there again. I'm, I'm doing it kind of slow, so if, if you want to do it a little bit faster, uh, uh, you, you put your heat up a little bit, and you can, you can drag it a little bit faster and get the, same, get the same burn on it. And a lot of it has to do with how fast or how slow you're pulling the pin. Uh, uh, if, if, you, if you pull it too slow, you see the smoke coming off of it? Like Dixie Big said, if, if it's smoking, your pen's too hot. That's not necessarily true. Sammy and I were, we took a class under Michael Gibson, and we were walking around the first day we got up there, and it was down in, in one of the buildings there in Gatlinburg, and he was doing uh, like faces, and he had his pen was glowing I mean, it was brilliant red, and he was burning mustaches and eyebrows and stuff just that quick, and it looked great, but it wasn't it wasn't detailed. Uh, so, uh, if you, if you're burning if you're burning too slow, or your pen's too hot, it's gonna smoke. Uh, if it's burning a little bit too hot, you can either turn it down or you can speed it up just a little bit. If you're using that to shade something with, you want to turn your temperature way down, and you can kind of lay it on its side, and then you just kind of rub it a little bit. And I don't know if y'all can see that, how it's, how it's turning brown there. Can you see that? And you can just kind of drag it out and drag it out. And, and you can burn a little bit darker up here on one edge. And then as you go across, you can make it get lighter. And that gives you that shading effect. But if you've got plenty of money and you want to have a lot of pens and stuff, you can buy no telling how many shaders uh, they sell. If any of y'all want to look at these books, they're, they're old. Uh, but... From razor tip, you can buy carving tools, sanding tools. Uh, give you an idea of of tips. Is 
these are called, let me find what I want. These are writing and stylus tips. There's two pages of tips. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There are two, can you see it, Gerald? Yeah. You can buy all kind of, all kind of tips. Ball tips, writing tips, calligraphy tips, uh, and, and one thing about this company, if, uh, if you have a specific tip that you want and know how to tell them or design it, or they'll make the tip for you. So, you know, if you're doing something just really special and you want something just that you can't find anywhere else in the world and everything, you can get a hold of them and they'll make you a tip to your specifications. Have you uh, got one of the replaceable tips? No, again? no. I, I started out with, with uh, uh, when I bought the thing, it came with like two pins or three pins. Uh, and now they, they make a, a standard pin and then they make a, uh, they make what they call a, a, a heavier duty pin. And you can see the difference in those right there. Oh, uh, that, that is a shader pin. But most of the time, I, if I'm going to shade something, I'll shade it with a skew. Uh, it takes me too much time. Uh, yeah, if you're burning for a long time, is not working. And is it still working now? Okay, I'll try to be more careful. Yeah. It, it, Take it's still not going in and out. What if we laid it up here? And because I may be I may be touching it. They shouldn't bother it though. Is that better? Yeah. We'll we'll leave it laying there and I'll try I'll try to be careful with it. Is that a razor tip catalog? This is a razor tip catalog. Uh, you can pass it around and look at it. And there's there's another one. Uh, there's a. Uh, more stuff in there about razor tips. And th this one, this one's got you know tips and stuff just like that one does. This one's just a little smaller. And like I say, these. Uh, uh, this this unit right here. When I got this. Uh, unit it came with a pen and was $195. I just looked up this razor tip dual bar burner yeah. with large skew pen. Yeah. It sounds like one skew pen. Yeah, one's on, uh, on Amazon. Yeah. It's 289 so you're not getting a deal. Uh, no, uh -uh. But there again, like I started to say a while ago, I go to Walmart and I look up there and they got all these. Uh, wood burning pens and, and uh, tips and stuff and 1995 and, and, and you might as well just throw your money away because you're not going to be happy with what you get uh, you're going to get depressed over it uh, it it's not going to be fun and you're going to give up so I know it's a lot of money but you got to decide, do I really, really want to get into this? And if you really want to get into it, jump in it with both feet. Don't, don't piddle around because you're, going, you're just going to make yourself miserable if, you, if, if you're not, if you're not uh, using some good quality stuff. And it's just like wood turning tools. If you, if you buy wood turning tools that are cheap, they won't stay sharp. And the worst thing you can have in your shop is a dull tool. Believe me, it'll hurt you. This this bigger skew right here. 
Okay. I'm on. I'm going to start on, on this one. I kind of sketched it out. I'm, I'm hoping y'all can see it because I didn't draw it real dark. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little wood burning on this and give you an idea of, of uh, i got to turn that down a little bit more, though. Okay. Uh, first thing I try to do is on something like this is draw the stem. And... Uh, Boy, I hope that's, yeah, that's all right. I'll start at the top, and I try to, I try to just draw it in a good, straight, smooth line. And if I pull it too fast, it's one of those things you just kind of learn to. And if I had to pin a little bit hotter, I would probably go a little faster. But like I say, these, these things are so sharp, you can, you can start right in that line, and then you can come down and you can get, God, maybe a, a 128th off of the edge of it and make it a little bit wider, and then add another line to it and make it a little bit wider. And as you get down to the bottom, you want, you want your, your stem to be wide. Another thing is I see better from one side than I do the other. So I'll, I'll burn that side. Then I'll turn it around and burn the other side. And that kind of gives me an idea of how wide I want that stem. Then I can come back and I can fill it in and wood burning for somebody watching it wood burning can be just boring as the devil so y'all please ask questions <laughs> I, it, 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 this can be especially stippling can be more boring than watching somebody sand something because <laughs> it takes forever stippling stuff yeah, at least you don't get dust up your nose. that's true yeah. I will, and like I say, I I. I I'm just running parallel lines right now, trying to make that make that stem just a little bit wider uh, at the bottom than at the top. Is there any preference between doing parallel lines on the stem versus stippling it? I have done both ways. Uh, I had rather run parallel lines on the stem because it makes it look like it's going up. Just like in wood turning, you know, you, you want your eye to do this. If you're burning little black dots, then you don't see it going up like that. It's just little black dots. So I had rather do the lines. And you, you can see the lines in it, but a lot of stems, if you pull a weed up out here, it's got lines on the stem. It goes up. So it, it, to me, it just looks a little better. I'm trying not to bear too hard. Yeah, I just want to. I, w I want to. I want to burn it a little deep, but I don't want it, you know, deep. I just want to burn a consistent, smooth line as consistent as I can get it. Uh, and there again, a lot of it has to do with what kind of wood you're burning on, how hot you've got your tip, how fast you're moving. You can, if your tip is not as hot as, say, you would like it, you can slow the movement down. If your tip is a little bit too hot 
and you're good enough at it, you could speed it up and come on. And that way you don't burn a dark spot or create smoke. Uh, now, I'm going to step back up here uh, and show you one other thing. When I get, when I get ready to do a leaf, which, and the ones I'm going to do on here are going to be like some of these others. But you start off, that's the bottom of the leaf, and just put a notch in it. Come up here, put a notch in it, and come up here. It, it, you know, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Leaves are not perfect. And you come back and put your line in it, like through there. Do it like this. And th they don't have to be all the way up to here and all the way down and touching touching the main stem they can be close because as, as you look at a leaf or something as you turn it you may see that that vein come all the way down to the stem and then turn it a little bit the other way you don't see it come all the way to the stem so it's it's uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't have to be just dead on perfect every time now go back here and I wish I had my other. These are too strong. If I get, can y'all still see what I'm burning, or is my head in the way? Okay. All right. I'm gonna start up here at the top with this leaf. Okay. A lot of it has to do with uh, how gr how grainy the wood is. Uh, that wood is good for because it is grainy. It, it's a little bit grainy, uh, and the reason I've got it with the, with going up and down this way is the flowers going up and the grains going up. I wouldn't want I wouldn't want the flower going this way and the grain going that way. It it just it to me it would look funny. Now, if if it's a if it's a flower like that, it really doesn't matter whether it's this way or that way. Put it in the cow. Except yeah. It doesn't matter whether it's this way or that way, except if you're putting a stem down it. And even if if it was cross grain, you can bring the stem down and run it across parallel to the grain and make it look okay. But what kind of flower is that? I have no earthly idea. It's, it's, it's something that I think I saw. Uh, I, 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 look at the draperies behind you. The what? There are four, four petals on those, on the draperies behind you. Oh, the drapery, yes. Yeah, there are four petals on it, and they're all the same. And, and, and a few months ago, I got up and I took pictures of those and, and took them home and looked at them, and I decided I didn't like that, so I erased them. But you can, you can find... Good for stylized. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen pictures of, uh, or look at wallpaper, that old wallpaper that had flowers and all this kind of stuff. And you get ideas from everything. You know, it just you just gotta open your eyes and look. Uh, but yeah, to get back to this, I'm trying to follow the grain going up and down, Sammy. Now, uh, let me finish this one right here. A little mark in it there, a little mark in it there. Now, I'm gonna do. I'm going to do one that the leaf has folded over and you're kind of facing the leaf. It's kind of wide. Uh, and this requires rotating the pen with your fingers like this. So if you're, holding the, if you're holding the pen like this, you're not doing as well. You need to get it up here and hold it with the tip of your finger so you can twist it and roll it. It's 
it you, you, it's 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 more difficult, but the more you do it, you learn you learn how to roll your fingers and bring it around. And sometimes you need to draw it from the top side, what I call the top side of the flower, down to the bottom. And then other times I want to flip it around and draw it from the point back up this way. And that's, that's to me, that's just a personal preference uh, of how you do things. Where do you get that design? Uh, no, in actuality, uh, I saw these leaves that looked something similar to this uh, as I was going in a restaurant to eat one day in Cleveland. It was a vine growing up on the side of the wall. Now, I don't know what it was. I took a picture of it. I took a picture of it, and I don't touch it, you know. Uh, but uh, you, you, you just find... Just anywhere you go, you can look down on the ground and see something interesting. Uh, and if you've got an iPhone or something, just take a picture of it and go home and look at it and study it and, and try to copy it with a pencil. And uh, It's just opportunity out there if you just open your mind. and Yeah, you can Google and find everything in the world. Uh, it, it, it's amazing what you can find on Google these days. You can find stuff you don't even want to find. David Ellsworth's uh, signature shape, somebody found one that was predated his. It was done in ceramic. And it's exactly like his. So very well. That's true. Um, so he probably copied it. <laughs> I'm not saying that, neither did the guy that said it. Was it a symposium? Now, here's something else I'm going to do. If you look at, the, if you look at, the, at this bowl here, uh, you can see what, and I can't see it that well, but there's a, like a little seed head that comes up that's, that's kind of spread out and everything. I'm, I'm going to show you how I do that because I don't burn the stem in it any further than where it touches the bottom. Where it touches the what? Where it touches the bottom of the little seed head. So there's my stem. Now I'm going to do the seed head right here uh, and I'm going to turn this down a little bit because I don't want it to get too hot. This, this, and this is where it comes in, just making one little line after another, just as close together as you possibly can get them. Now, <coughs> come this way, and you don't want these. You don't want the two lines touching when they're like this. You don't want them. They're coming out this way. You don't want them touching. You want them close together, but not touching. You want to leave a little white, a little white space right in the middle of them. One pen with it, and it's probably it's a large skew. Uh, yeah. And what's the second one called? The, the 
Single burner is not going to be that much cheaper. Well, do you use both the burners when you burn? Uh huh. It depends on what I'm doing. Yeah, I get two. I got one for my left hand and one for my right hand. So I, just use I think and you need that. Being a professional like you. Indeed. I've seen it. You can burn out too quick, do This left hand is just as bad as his right hand. Woodcraft got a bell for $159.99. $159? Woodcraft. Okay, the single at tree line is $149.95. And he said Woodcraft? Woodcraft? Huh? $159. Was that a razor? $149. Yes. Now, if you notice, there, there, there are dark spots in that where, where I got it burned a little too much. You can, you, can, you can get some of those dark spots out if you, if you burn them a little too much. Uh, no. Mm -mm. Let me see if I've got it in here. Yeah. It may be in my in my other. Let me see. You can take a. Uh, there it is, right there. I thought it was in there. A little Walmart Exacto knife. And you can get right down on that on that dark spot. And not using the point, but using just back off the edge of the point a little bit and lay it down just a little bit and, and scrape it just a little bit. And you can take that where you burned it a little bit too dark. You can scrape that out of it. So we, just because it's a little bit too dark, unless it's just really, really burned too dark, you can lighten it up a little bit uh, by scraping it just a little bit. Now, I'm going to go back here and burn a couple of more. I'm going I'm to burn a, uh, a leaf up under a leaf uh, to give it some depth. Uh, No. Uh -uh. No, you just you just you just burn the leaf up to the to the edge of the one that you want to be in front and 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 don't burn anything across it. Now, go back here and lay it down and shade it just a little bit, right up to the edge of the the one that the to the to the leaf that's supposed to be above it. If you shade the back one a little bit dark, A shadow line? Mm -mm. I'm not that good. <laughs> but you can see there what the leaf on the front that's folded over this way uh, right here. 
Can you see it? Uh, it give it the, the darker one behind it makes makes it look you know further away. And then there's another one. I've got another leaf right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn it in there. This, this leaf that I just burned, the way I've got it drawn, it's behind the other two leaves. So it needs to be a little darker than the one that, that, it's, in, that it's behind. That's just a thinner shade, right? Yeah, shade it a little bit darker. I got it burned a little too much right there. And right where it touches this other one, burn that edge pretty dark. That makes it look like it goes up under. That makes it look like you got three leaves, the front one, the middle one, and the back one. It gives you, gives you depth in it. Can you see that on there? The other thing that Sammy was asking about was where it was oriented. If it's oriented and going across the grain, as you're shading it, you're going with the grain, you're not going to get as many little dark spots as if you were going across the grain. If you're going across the grain, it's going to go from soft to hard back to soft, and it's going to make a, where it goes across the soft, it's going to make it a little bit darker then going across the hard grain. So there, there's an advantage to keeping it, you know, running parallel with the grain. Now, that kind of gives you an idea of that one. Uh, the other day, I was playing with, with what I was going to do on this, and I was, I was sitting there drawing on my, I keep this board in the shop, and I was sitting there drawing on it, and I, I stumbled on a new idea that I kind of liked, and I'm going to share it with you and see what you think. Let me get this cleaned off here. The other day I was just playing and for whatever reason, I'm doing this. Now, what is that? I don't know what it is, <laughs> but if you come in here if you come in here and you black all of this, all this in here and all around out here, you black it all, you end up with, with it look, almost looks like a, a puzzle, pieces of a puzzle that have come apart. You know, it, it, especially, especially if you're drawing it, one of them like this and the other one like this, where they, they've come apart right here. But I thought it was a pretty, pretty neat idea. So I was going to try that. Now, uh, I thought I drew one on here, but maybe I didn't. I didn't. But anyway, let's draw one on it and see what it looks like on here. That's not the one I want. I have no earthly idea what it looks like. Good point. Yeah, 
You could say it looks like that, yeah. An amoeba. Amoeba. Now, when you're doing all these, this will give you a lot of good practice with rolling around and going around curves and stuff. So I've got to get down here where I can see. I've got to turn that back up. Yeah, I, I stipple it and then I put the dye on it. Well, you know, like I said, doing lines like this and doing different stuff gives you more practice. Uh, and at the same time, it, it, it's fun to do because you're creating something d different. Y'all, the ones that were here uh, last month for for uh, Brett's demo, uh, you remember he did the uh, he did the tree uh, that he was doing in black with the little leaves and stuff on it. Y'all remember that one? Yeah. I was sitting in the den the other night, and I had a piece of paper, and I was thinking about that, and I started drawing off what he had done, and I sat there for a while. I got up and went in the kitchen to get me something to drink or something to eat and drink, and lo and behold, I pulled a, a plate off of the cabinet shelf, and looked on the plate, and there was that tree done in black and white, just like he had done. It wasn't the same same shape, but it was the same idea. Well, but has it, anybody ordered, ordered any of those drawings that he was talking about from the Gore Company? Yes. You did order them? Yes. Did you get trees? Did I get what? Trees. Trees. Leaves. What, did, what, what pattern did you You know, Brett was. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, but I'm just saying it. Yeah, you know it. There's nothing else like sassafras leaves. I just had a thought. What kind of leaf is this?
poplar. <laughs> it's weird looking, but poplars are like that. They just flat across the top. And you think, that, God, that's ugly. But you go out and look at a tree, and they're that way. Now, I'm going to change. Turn that up a little bit. No, this is this is a ball tip that I'm using now to do the stippling. And and I'll show you something else on on stippling. Uh, when you're when you're stippling something, you don't want to take your ball tip and follow the line around like that and stipple it like that it's coming around with it and then and then and then come back and fill it in and the, and the reason you don't want to do that is all of your all of your dots are going to be lined up in a perfect line and then the ones in the middle are going to be random and it's going to look funny as the devil. So what I try to do is just stipple all over it, you know, different spots like that, and then, and then just slowly fill them in. Even, even up to, if I get up to the edge here, I'll do, you know, I'll spread it out and some of them. I'll leave a leave a space and I'll come back and fill in the space. And it doesn't give you that drawn line look. Uh, yes, it 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 depends. Uh, you know. Uh, Basswood is soft. It's it doesn't have a lot of grain in it. Uh, it's used mostly for carving, uh, and it, and it burns real well. It will burn. You, you have to be real careful. You 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 set your pen to the correct temperature, or you'll burn it too dark. It'll just because it's soft. It'll just go into it. Uh, but basswood is fun to burn. Uh, any any wood that that doesn't have a lot of grain uh, is is uh, Bradford Bradford pear burns nicely. Uh, you can get some Bradford pear that's darker than others. I prefer to burn light color wood because I like the black and white contrast. Uh, uh, it. it there's, it's, it's, it's one of those things you just, you look at it and you, you practice and uh, play with it. And if you mess it, if, well, you don't mess it up, but uh, if it didn't turn out exactly like you want it, uh, it's kind of like wood turning. Sometimes, sometimes a mistake can turn out to be something really, really nice. Now, I'm not going. I'm not going to stipple anymore. Stippling, like I said, is more boring than sanding. Uh, stippling is just the only fun part about stippling. 
is the last dot you put on it. That's what's fun about it. The most boring thing is the first dot. But that last one, God, I've accomplished something. I got it done. <laughs> now, uh, don't, I don't get much because, like I say, I've, I've cut most of the, the little hairs off that brush. But I'll come back and, and I hope you can see this. I'll touch it kind of in the middle. And just and just touch it. Don't don't try to don't try to drag your brush around. And just touch it and allow the allow the uh, the dye to to run in the in the wood. Because you go trying to you go trying to draw a straight line with it, you're gonna screw it up for sure. It's a black leather dye. Uh, Beaver or whatever it is. I, I stumbled on it uh, years ago. Where Gosh, did you get this? I bought it at Tandy Leather Company in Memphis. And I mean, you can, uh, huh? Are they still open? I have no earthly idea. I hadn't been back to that place in 10 years. Yeah, uh, but and you can get different colors of it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, but I just I bought the black just just to try it, and and see how it would do. Have you tried India ink versus the black dye? No. Mm -mm. Some of that is uh, museum quality, so you uh, sort of hold the color. And you can see. I hope you can see when you touch it. It 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 wants to. It wants to spread. I'm just touching it with the tip, just just the tip, because I don't want to get, I don't want to put too much ink on there, and take a chance, <laughs> because if it's if it's too much ink, it's gonna jump that line. I don't care what you do. If you put if you put a a big drop on there, that big drop is going somewhere, and it's not all gonna be down. It's gonna go sideways on you. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I guess because when, 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 I, when I first started doing it, you know, I was... Does it not run as much if, you, if it's not stippled? Uh, well, that texture, doesn't it? Yeah, it has the texture. I guess you could do the stippling after you had done it. You, you would burn through the surface, but when you burn through it, it's still going to be black underneath it. But you still got to come back where it's black and charred. You still got to come back and put some dye in it to to keep it to keep it that black. Uh, but you can see it. It it turns it pretty dark. It, I, I wouldn't rub it right now, but I, I have no earthly idea how long it takes because I, I get up and I go get something to drink, come back and do something else on it. Fourteen and a half minutes. Sir? <laughs> he said fourteen and a half minutes. <laughs> fourteen and a half minutes, yeah. Uh, fourteen and a half, thirty-two and a, thirty-two and a quarter seconds. Uh, but that's kind of what, and that's, that's like Brett did, the stempling. Uh, uh, but I, I like the when you put the dye in it, especially if you if you if you did the dye all the way around here, all and and you'd come out and burn this this outside line here and do the whole thing in black and have this one thing right in the middle. Uh, it, it it would be interesting. I I don't know how it would look on an egg or how it would look on a platter, uh, but. I intend to try it on a platter. Yeah. If you came back today with a red mm -hmm. on the pattern itself, do you have trouble with jumping that line? 
No, because if you, if you put the if you put the the red in here in the center, it's going to run out to that that burned line, that perimeter line, and it's going to stop there. It, it's not it's not going to go over that line. I mean, it's 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 like going out in, in layman's terms, going out and digging a ditch. Yeah. yeah. And you plant flowers on this side of the ditch and you spray the other side of the ditch with paint. Unless, unless you hold the paint up in the air, it's not coming over to get on the flowers. The paint's going to run up to the edge of that ditch and it's going to stop. It ain't going down in the ditch and coming up on the other side. Well, in reference to Weldon Gourds, you know, the website that Brett, uh, Brett mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now here's something. Here's here's something else you could do on this if you wanted to. Go on. No. Mm -hmm. All the stuff that Brent had on his handout is on the website in the document section under his name. Now here, here's, here's something else you could do. If you wanted to come in here and put color in these open places and give it some character, you could just you could take a, a, a color pen and, and paint it, or you could dye it. But if you used one of these little engraving tools that you can buy at Hobby Lobby, you know, they're about this long and about that wide, and they're kind of shaped like a pistol or something, and you turn them on, and they're going, that's all they're doing. You could stipple this without dyeing it. You could stipple it in the middle without dyeing it. And then if you clean it up with a brush to get the fuzz off of it, and then take a a Prismacolor pen or whatever, or, or a red dye and dye it, and you would have that character stippled into this, whereas if you stippled in here with black, a, and you put red on the black, it, it could change the color. If you put yellow on the black, you might end up with not green, but orange or something. You know, you, you change the color because you're mixing two colors. But if you use that little engraving tool to stipple with and then put the dye on it, now you've got a texture in it, uh, which I think would look really good. I'm going to try that. I hadn't thought about that. That's true, yeah. yeah. But that's, a good, that's, a, that, that's an idea I want to try.